In this lesson, I'm going to explain how you can control audio volume and panning on a clip-by-clip -clip basis using the Audio Clip Mixer. The Audio Clip Mixer is a new feature in the latest version of Premiere Pro. To follow along, go to Working Files, go down to Projects, and then scroll on down here and open up Audio Clip Mixer. This project consists of several clips here that have audio associated with them, a music track, some sound effects, wind noise there, and a thunderstorm there. So we have four tracks of audio. In previous lessons, I've explained how to control audio in a couple of different ways. Let me review them for you here. I'll click on this one here to select it. I'm going to mute the music track there and go up to the Effect Controls panel right here. And I'm going to adjust the volume for this clip right there. I'll put the current time indicator there and bring it down quite a bit because I know it's very loud. So I'll open this up and we'll bring it down, let's say, to minus 20 or so right around there. And now we'll listen to it. Okay, I can watch it over here in the view meter. I see it's about minus 24 decibels below full scale, which may be a little bit too loud when I play it up against the music here. So I need to control the volume again over here. So I'll bring it down farther. And that adds a keyframe in addition to the first one that was added by default. And that gets a little complicated now. We don't need two keyframes here. We probably don't even need one, but I'll just undo this by doing Control or Command Z a couple of times. And we'll bring it down again to about that far. And that's probably okay, but this is kind of a hit or miss approach. You know, it would be better if we could sort of do this on the fly. So if I go back here like this and play it and adjust it like so, and again, we're adding keyframes and it's moving up and down and it's really a little bit complicated. So I'm going to reset this guy and put this thing back to zero here and get rid of all those keyframes and try a different approach. We'll do it down here in the clip here inside the timeline. To get a better look at that, I'm going to expand it by using my scroll wheel and my mouse here like so. This little white line there is the volume envelope, sometimes called the volume rubber band. I want to pull that one down before I play this because it's going to be kind of loud. So I'll pull that down here. You can see it showing up over here as well. That might be okay. A little too loud. I'll pull it down farther, but you can see it's tricky to get it exact here. If I hold on the control of the command key, it's a little bit more of a fine-tuned approach here. But again, it's hit or miss as you try it out. Like that. If I do it over time, let's see what happens. Go back like that. Really hard to nail it there. So it'd be easier if I could use some other control that was not quite so small like this. And I will do that in just a moment with the audio clip mixer. So let's bring this guy back to the starting point by dragging it up like so. Of course, I can add keyframes to this and gradually increase the volume, for example. So to add keyframes, I just hold on the control of the command key and click on that to add a keyframe or two. I could use the pen tool to do the same thing. I can drag this down like so and bring this guy down and we can gradually increase the volume. Let's try that. That sort of straight line approach to audio fading up or down is not necessarily as organic as I'd like. So again, the audio clip mixer can come to our rescue. So I'm going to undo that controller command Z a couple of times to get rid of those guys. So let's take a look at this audio clip mixer. It's right up here. It has these rectangles here that are controls for each track. Now we're not controlling this on a track by track basis. We're controlling this on a clip by clip basis. And you can tell that's happening because these two at the end here are grayed out. There are four tracks, but there are no clips currently under the current time indicator. So those guys are grayed out. If I move this over here where those clips do exist, then these guys suddenly light up so we can control them there on a clip by clip basis. Let's go back to this one now. The model for this comes from the audio mixer. That was the mixer that came with previous versions of Premiere. You don't even see it here in the default view. We need to go to Window Audio Track Mixer, as it's called now, to differentiate it from the audio clip mixer. This is the audio track mixer that controls on a track by track basis. You might have a whole bunch of clips here, but you're controlling the volume for the entire track, which is not a very exact way to do things if you've got volume all over the map here. You notice how the volume level there is kind of medium. Here it's really loud. Here it's kind of quiet. Here it's really quiet. So if we control the entire track volume, it's going to be kind of hard to get the subtle differences here if we want to adjust it on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. But anyway, this is the model for it. And the way you control keyframes here is using this little drop-down list here, latch, touch, or write. And these are sort of audio terms as opposed to video terms. It might be a little bit confusing, but they are the model for the clip mixer. So let's go back to the clip mixer now. But the clip mixer does not have latch, touch, or write. It just has keyframes. But the behavior here is like latch, touch, or write. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's control the volume of this little waterfall here by adjusting this volume level here, because that's the track one for this particular clip that's currently active there. So I'll just pull it down a bit like this and watch the little volume envelope there go down as well. Much easier to control here. It's a larger control, easier to manage that. Let's just pull that back to the beginning like that, and we'll just play it and we'll adjust it here. 
What's nice is that the view meter is right there, so you can see your volume changes right here inside it. They happen to coincide with the slider, but that's just coincidence here. I think that's a reasonable volume level there. Let's go to the first one here. When I go to the first one, watch what happens to this little slider. Boom, it suddenly jumps up because this slider relates to this clip, not to that clip. So even though we're on the same track, this guy's reacting to the fact that we are now on top of a different clip. Let's bring this guy down like that. You can see the view level there. Let's watch how it changes from one clip to the next. And it is a little bit louder, but notice that the slider came down because this clip is so much louder. So I think that's really what you want. You want the volume to be a little bit louder here on this guy. So I think it's working just fine. What I'd like to do now is control volume levels over time. I want to automate the changes. So I'm going to do that down here with the music. So I'll expand the view here a bit. And I'm going to unmute it here or over here. I'm going to take the current time indicator back to the beginning. I'm going to mute the track above it here so we don't hear the waterfall for the time being. I'm going to bring the volume level down here like that and turn on keyframes. And now it's going to record any action I make here over time, which is really slick. So I'll play this now by pressing the space bar, bring the volume up. Stop. And you can see all those keyframes that were added there. I'll press the plus key a couple of times so you can see some of them. It's amazing, all those keyframes. It's a much more organic way to do a fade, fade up or fade down. But the sort of fly in the ointment is that when you stop, the last keyframe automatically goes back to wherever you started, in this case, to silence. Listen to how abrupt this is. Wow, do we really want that? But that is the kind of behavior that goes on in the mixer, which has now been transferred over to the audio clip mixer. So I'm going to get rid of that last keyframe, but it's clicking on it until it turns yellow like that. And then press the delete or backspace and we get rid of it. And now it'll behave the way we want it to behave. Just want to make sure you're aware of that. That behavior always happens when you stop. You always get that one extra keyframe that goes back to wherever you started, which is probably not what you want to have happen. So just be aware. You can always go down to that keyframe and delete it off the timeline like this or off the clip in the timeline. All right, let's have this thing fade out at the end. At the end, I've got some sound effects here. Thunderstorm, wind. I want to bring the music down before the end of the clips, before the wind noise finishes. It's kind of cool to do that. Back up a little bit. Zoom out a bit. Minus key a couple times. Put the current time indicator right about here. Now I'm going to bring the audio down. So we'll just start playing it, and I'll pull this thing down. So I'll press the space bar. Notice the keyframes as we fade out, but also notice that extra one there that goes back to the original volume level. I click on that, turn it yellow, press the backspace or delete, and it's gone. And now it's going to behave the way we want it to behave. What about controlling panning? Let me move back to the middle here. I'm going to bring the volume level of this guy down a bit like that so we don't get it too loud. I want to pan it left to right, so I'll put the current time indicator there. I'm going to use this control up here to pan it left to right, but I want to see the panning as I work on that. So I click on effects here like that. I'm going to open up the panner balance. And now this rubber band, this envelope, is now the balance rubber band or envelope. If you hover over it long enough, you'll see the word balance suddenly show up there. So now we're going to see the balance here left to right. So I'm going to pull this guy left to right here as we play this. I've got keyframes on still. So here we go. Left. Right. Center. Back to the right. Now I'm going to stop. And there are all those keyframes, left, right, center, back down to the right. And once again, it pops back to the starting point with this last keyframe. So I'm going to click on that to make it active. Press delete so that I keep it to the right, which is where I wanted it to end up, like so. So there you go. That's how you can control volume levels and panning on a clip-by-clip -clip basis using the Audio Clip Mixer.